20 years after the fire, and still the forest has not returned. This is the Paul Fire Site, a remote area 27 kilometers southeast of Houston, British Columbia. It's huge. Over 80 square kilometers of forest land wasted by fire. Over a long period of time, a forest will reseed itself. But here, after 20 years, no useful crop has grown back. In other areas, insects and disease have also killed the forests, adding to the area of forest land which is not yet growing a new crop of trees. Much effort, money and care will be needed before the forest returns. British Columbia has many areas of forest land which are not yet growing a new crop of trees. Historically, there are reasons for this. Years ago, nobody worried about the trees. There were more than could be used. The forest seemed endless. A wealth that was at times a nuisance as land was cleared for farms and town sites. A brisk trade in timber and logs soon exhausted the more accessible trees near the sea, rivers and lakes. But since there was always another valley of trees to cut, few people worried about the timber supply. Logging methods and equipment became more efficient. The demand increased and the forest-based economy exploded into prosperity. But the forests weren't endless. We were cutting more trees than we were growing. Timber harvest, fires, insects and disease were removing forests from the land faster than they were growing back. There may have been more trees in that next valley, but the cost of building roads was higher than the value of the timber. The Forest Service and private companies began planting more seedlings. In the beginning, attention was concentrated on the freshly logged areas where there were roads. Even if there was access to some of the remote fire-killed sites, there weren't always enough seedlings available to plant there. Limited time and labor, valuable tax dollars, and the limited supply of trees available for planting had to cover not only all the new logging, but also the legacy of old logging practice and fire-wasted forest lands. Today there are restrictions on logging to protect the forest land. Harvesting practices may be designed to encourage natural regeneration. You don't always have to plant a tree for every tree that's removed. More than half the time, you can expect the forest to reseed itself. But each forest is different. Altitude, drainage, thickness of soil cover, weather patterns, and of course the availability of seed cones are all factors in the return of a forest. Success still depends on the weather and the whims of nature. If it's too wet or too dry, too hot or too cold, there can be a failure of the seed supply. In some situations, an adequate seed crop may happen only once every 7 to 15 years. It takes a few years before it's known if the forest will return naturally. In some areas, the first signs of a successful new forest can be seen in only three years. In other slower growing areas, it may be necessary to wait seven years before it's known that a new forest has been established. Even where a forest could be expected to restock itself naturally, a forester may decide to plant immediately in order to save growing years. The forest brings billions of dollars into the province each year, jobs and opportunities for thousands of British Columbians. In 1979, Canada exported nearly $12 billion worth of forest products. This was greater than the net contribution to the balance of payments from the combined sales of farms, fisheries, mines, oil and gas wells, iron and steel mills, chemicals and fertilizers. A large grain sale may get the headlines in our newspapers, 
but combined cash receipts for grains in 1979 amounted to about $4 billion. Forest products brought in $12 billion. But the pressure on forest land is increasing. The lush valley bottoms are being claimed by urban sprawl, agriculture, roads and hydroelectric developments. More trees can be planted, trees can be improved, but the land available for growing trees is limited. The need to make all of our forest land fully productive is crucial. To gain access to the pole fire, roads had to be built. But the tangle left by the fire made planting difficult, if not impossible. Dead trees are removed and burned, eliminating the fire hazard and improving access for the planters. On the Paul fire site, much of this has to be done when the soil is winter hard. An intensive forest management program funded by a federal and provincial agreement includes planting understocked lands from earlier times. New forest nurseries have been established. Existing nurseries are being put on higher production quotas, so that by 1985, 150 million new trees will be planted each year. And each year, more of these trees will be from improved genetic stock. New ideas are always being investigated. Mechanical planting is still in the experimental stage. Hand planting is still the best method for putting seedlings in the ground. On this good growing area, the forest was expected to grow back with seeds from nearby trees. But before there was a good seed crop, the brush took over. Now the brush is so high and so dense that it's impossible for trees to get started naturally. To get this area back into production, the brush must be cleared away and the trees planted by hand. Brush clearing of prime growing sites is expensive, but the cost will be recovered from future forest crops.
Where necessary, dense young forests are being properly spaced. This produces a better crop by concentrating all the growth on the best trees. Reclaiming unproductive forest lands is not a new idea. This is the new forest planted after the Campbell River fire of 1939. In 1971, after spending over a million dollars fighting the Sioux fire, the Ministry of Forests was faced with the task of re-establishing 20,234 hectares of fire-blackened forest. Snags were cleared and burned, ready for planting. disaster. A plague of black army cutworms wiped out the new plantations and the planting had to begin again. So far about one-third of the area has been planted with ten and a half million trees. The names go on. The Van Fire, 12,820 hectares destroyed. The West Fire, 9,348 hectares and the Grove Fire, 16,187 hectares. All major projects to recover full use of our shrinking forest land base. By 1985, restocking by natural regeneration and planting will be equal to current depletion by fire, pests and harvesting. Older understocked lands will be planted at a rate of 40 million trees a year. The terrible wastes like this Paul fire site are being reclaimed. Machines have been tried, but hand planting is still the best all-round method for this area, even when you have to plant 12 million trees. Our forests give us a high standard of living. They provide habitat for wildlife, quiet places for recreation. Reclaiming these lands for the forest is expensive, but it's an investment for the future, part of our responsibility to our children and our grandchildren.